G'day boys and girls, it's Colin back again. I was on my holidays, walking across like a desert, there was lots of sand, and I noticed on such a hot day, we find an oasis, or like a, a, a well of water on the ground, and I thought, wow. But we're gonna tell you the story in this about bitter waters, and how they became sweet. Whenever you drink water, it's important it's not bitter. <sighs> Nice and sweet and tasty. Before that, let's be thankful and say, sing a little song, Everything I Am. Wonderful little song. Water is a gift and we need water so much and we're going to learn about that right now as we go to the desert. Today we're in the wilderness. As you go through the Bible you'll come across uh, the journey of God's people and in the Bible times in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis and especially the book of Exodus, you learn about a journey for the children of Israel. And that's whenever they were taken bondage. If you read the story of Joseph, uh, whenever Joseph came to Egypt, his family then followed him. Whenever God promoted him to being like prime minister in all of Egypt. And an amazing thing happened, but for that time it was wonderful. But then a new Pharaoh came and he made the children of Israel, Joseph's family into slaves. And they were in bondage over many, many years. So God sends Moses back to them to relieve them, to bring them out of Egypt. And you can read the story of the 10 plagues and eventually Pharaoh says, let them go. And in that journey, God was teaching the people the importance of relying on God and trusting in him at all times. And the lesson's true today. But the people kept murmuring and complaining. And God doesn't like it whenever we remember and complain. So he was teaching a lesson. We must rely and trust. Whenever you remember and complain at home, your parents don't like that. They want you to rely on them to feed you, to look after you, to give you what you need. But if you continually complain and murmur about the food's not good enough, your clothes aren't good enough, your parents are going to become like stubborn and they're going to say, no, if you don't like your clothes tough, if you don't like your food tough, that's the food you're eating because where do you draw the line? When you keep wanting and wanting and wanting, then you can never be happy. But God was giving them the basic necessities of life and their food, clothing and shelter. These people had tents to sleep in, their clothes in their body, but one thing they really needed was food and water. And water out of all of these things was more important than food, was more important than clothes, and more important than shelter. Water is a basic essential in 
life. So as they started to make their journey across the wilderness, similar to where we're walking today, nothing but sand and stones and not many plants. The place was pretty much barren, not much life, not much wildlife or birds, and it was just pure sunshine, and they're walking. Excitement of the, for the first day, wondering, we're free, and they were so happy once they crossed the Red Sea, they were praising God for setting them free. But very soon they started to get hungry, they started to get thirsty, then they kept blaming Moses. Why did you bring us out of there, out of slavery, so we're going to starve to death? And they never learnt the lesson simply of relying and trusting in God for absolutely everything. And whenever they were looking for water, God says to Moses, I'm going to give them water. And let's see the water that he gave them to drink. So as they're walking through the desert, the wilderness, over mountains, up mountains, across mountains, down mountains, into valleys, the people are really, really thirsty. And they just can't go to a shop and, and buy a bottle of water. They just can't turn on a tap. That's what we do in life. If we're thirsty at home, we just turn on a tap. Most people's got one, two, three, four, five sinks and maybe more water taps and most water in Northern Ireland if you're drinking from Northern Ireland the water's free and also the water is drinkable here in the wilderness there was no taps no shops no wells and the people were desperate for water and suddenly God said to Moses tell them in front of them there's going to be water uh, if they can see it and whenever they saw suddenly in the middle of nowhere this pool of water they were so excited they just literally ran to it but whenever they tasted of the water, suddenly they shouted, Bitter! Bitter! The water's got salt in it. It's bitter. And you can't drink salty water. Your, your body will reject salted water. The animals can't drink it. The people can't drink it. And that's why this place was called Mara. And Mara means bitter. But here, the people were so upset because the water was bitter. And then they turned to Moses. They literally turned to him and said, Moses, the water's bitter and we're going to die. We're in the middle of a desert with no water to drink and we're going to die. What are we going to do? And Moses prays, Lord, what will we do? And God says to Moses, Moses, look behind you and you're going to find a rod, a stick. I want you to throw it into the water. And he literally throws it into the water and he tells the people, drink the water. And the people looked at him. They're probably going to throw him into the water. But he says, drink the water. In fact, Moses, he would probably, by example, he went into the water and he drank it and he drank it. And then the children, they started to drink it. The animals started to drink it. And before you know it, everyone was literally drinking and gulping the water. The bitter water had become sweet instantly the moment the rod touched the ground. That's a miracle. Miracle after miracle, of course, in the Old Testament, as well as the New Testament. God was keep teaching the people, just like that, he can provide a pool of water, and just like that, he can make the, the water bitter, and just like that, he can make it sweet again. And he was touching it, teaching the people, stop murmuring, stop complaining. I promise you, I look after you, I'll feed you, that's why as you journey through the wilderness, we read how he provided manna, which is bread for them, fresh bread every single morning for them. The moment they got out of their tent, the bread was scattered everywhere in abundance. And he sent little quail birds, little chubby birds from the cook, so they have meat every day as well. So God was saying, stop complaining, stop murmuring. I promise to look after you, but I have to do it my way. Whenever you complain, whenever you remember and grumble and complain and uh I'm not going to do it. You have to trust in me. And that's the same today. Sometimes we want to trust God, but everything's good. And then when things go bad, we instantly blame God. And then God says, that's not the way it works. You must acknowledge me in every area of your life and that I will look after you. In my will, I'll do what I think is best for you, what I think you need. I don't supply your greed. I supply your need. So the Lord was teaching them in the bitter water here how he can make sweet. And sometimes in life we can have bitter experiences and God wants to make them sweet. He wants to He wants us to trace him and to trust him. The Bible talks about so many times about trusting God and all your ways acknowledge him. We have, to, we have to rely on the Lord. We have to trust in him. And the Bible says but whenever we trust in God, he's, he will give us strength. He will give us endurance. And he doesn't promise life to be easy. Life is going to have bitter experiences. In your exams, you might not get what you want. In relationship, it might, might 
might not turn out the way you want it to be. In career, you might have a better experience with a career, with a friendship, with a family experience. Life can sometimes seem bitter, but the lesson all the time is to trust God and rely on him to look after you. And whenever we think of the children of Israel, quite often whenever God provided for them, God blessed them. It was good for one or two days, then they turned away from God and continued to complain and murmur again. And God had to keep teaching them again and again. And even sometimes they even stopped worshipping God and they started building idols to worship God. The next day, literally, they were praising God one day and building idols the next day. And that really grieved God because one thing, one of the commandments, two of the commandments, in fact, teach us were not to worship idols or to make idols or graven images, anything that represent God. We have to stop that and only acknowledge God in the good times and also in the bad times of life. So here's a lesson about the bitter waters becoming sweet, how God was looking after the children of Israel. Really good video. Thank you so much for watching. Not only do we need water, but animals also need lots of water. Let's sing about the animals all around the world. today thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time yeah, yeah, yeah.